Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Gyeonggi Province this week. In order to help Backstreet Commerce recover from the impact of COVID-19, Gyeonggi Province plans to provide local currency transaction fee support to small businesses that offer discounts to customers who pay with local currency. At this traditional market, notices about a 5% discount for purchases made with local currency can be seen at almost every other shop. Shops are spontaneously offering such discounts in response to the growing number of customers paying with local currency which was received through disaster-related basic income payments from Gyeonggi Province. Nearly half of the 90 shops in the market are participating in the discount program. Gyeonggi Province decided to provide support to small businesses at traditional markets and on back streets that offer such discounts so as to cover the full amount of local currency transaction fees. When customers use local currency cards, transaction fees of approximately 0.7% are incurred by the businesses. 소비자의 경우 우수 가맹점을 방문할 경우 5%의 자동 할인을 받으실 수가 있습니다. 그리고 지역 화폐 수수료가 약 0.7%가 발생하는데 상인분들은 그 수수료 수수료에 대해서 경기도가 지원을 해주고 This provincial support program will benefit both consumers and shops. This program is also expected to help prevent businesses from charging extra for payments made with local currency. During a recent crackdown on animal-related illegal business activities, the Gyeonggi Province Special Judicial Police uncovered a total of 14 cases, including cruel slaughtering methods and unlicensed sales, as well as violations of livestock waste regulations. <laughs> According to the Animal Protection Act, the use of cruel slaughtering methods is subject to imprisonment for up to two years or a fine of up to 20 million Korean won, while showcasing or selling pets without a license is subject to a fine of up to 5 million Korean won. The Gyeonggi Province Special Judicial Police will send nine of the apprehended businesses to prosecution. The Gyeonggi Province Special Judicial Police recently uncovered a large number of illegal pyramid scheme operators that sold goods valued at billions of Korean won through coerced sales as well as unlicensed funeral insurers that operated pay later systems instead of installment payment systems. Some of these pyramid scheme operators deceived individuals, enticing them to join as salespersons while forcing them to purchase goods. Although registered as door-to-door -door sales businesses, these businesses operated multi-level schemes and coercively sold goods worth 4.4 billion Korean won to illegally recruited salespeople. Others sold goods worth 1.4 billion Korean won without registering their businesses. These businesses also refused to make refunds to complaining customers. <laughs> <laughs> 
operating a multi-level sales system with no registration or false registration as a door-to-door -door sales business is subject to imprisonment for up to seven years or a fine of up to 200 million Korean won. The apprehended funeral insurance operators included those who operated installment payment systems without complying with legal requirements for depositing 50% of the payments received. When registrations were cancelled due to such failures to comply, these companies changed to unregistered pay-later systems. Such violations are subject to imprisonment for up to three years or a fine of up to 100 million Korean won. Through intensified investigations of and crackdowns on illegal pyramid schemes and prepaid funeral insurance operators, the Gyeonggi Province Special Judicial Police are doing their utmost to protect the economically vulnerable who are experiencing more difficulties during the COVID-19 pandemic. The livestock industry in Korea is also suffering due to the impact of COVID-19. With the very survival of the industry at stake due to reduced consumption and the spread of various animal diseases, Gyeonggi Province decided to expand technical support for livestock farms and processing businesses. This dairy cattle feed company in Hwasong City recently received technical support from the Gyeonggi Province Animal Hygiene Laboratory that helped it to incorporate microorganisms that are essential components of quality animal feed. The new quality feeds are receiving good responses from dairy farms. With the addition of microorganisms, foul odors were reduced while cattle became more resistant to contagions such as foot and mouth disease. In addition, milk production also increased by more than 10%. This year, the Gyeonggi Province Animal Hygiene Laboratory will provide livestock farms and processing businesses that are experiencing difficulties due to the COVID-19 pandemic with intensive support in various areas, including farm quarantine and hygiene, as well as microorganism supply. The Gyeonggi Province Animal Hygiene Laboratory will maximize the effects of its technical support through cooperation with local governments and the livestock industry. With the spread of COVID-19 slowing, art galleries and museums are beginning to reopen in Korea. In Gyeonggi Province, diverse ceramic exhibitions have opened in the cities of Ichun, Yeoju, and Gwangju. At Ichun Serapia, an exhibition of works by last year's Kyungi International Ceramic Biennale Prize winners opened, featuring 250 ceramic works by 42 artists from 18 nations. These works range from realistic depictions of objects to those that convey messages about the global crisis due to the transformation of life forms and polluted natural environments, as well as works completed with materials obtained from flea markets. 예술 작품을 도자기를 봤는데 뭐 영화나 뭐 연극, 뮤지컬 이런 것보다 이렇게 좀 정적인 거 봤을 때좀 색다른 의미가 있어서 좋았던 것 같습니다. At Ceramic World in Yeoju City, another ceramic exhibition that targets youths in their 20s and 30s is taking place. This exhibition showcases the works of four artists who created pieces in four thematic colors. Jade green, millennial pink, ultraviolet and Z generation yellow. 네 분의 작가들이 각각 자신의 그 스펙트럼에서 지금 전시를 기획을 하셨거든요. 그래서 거기서 나타나는 시너지로 좀 치유의 에너지를 받아서 The exhibition at the Gonjiam Ceramic Park 
showcases ceramic works that reflect the history of ceramics. These works include blue ceramics of the Goryeo dynasty and white ceramics of the Joseon dynasty, as well as modern pieces. For the month of May, the museums and galleries of the Korea Ceramic Foundation will be accessible free of charge. After the use of the previous Kyunggi Provincial Anthem was discontinued due to allegations that its writer was pro-Japanese, Kyunggi Province held an open contest for new lyrics. Out of more than 1,500 entries, the province recently selected three final candidates for which another open contest for music began on May 21st. The previous provincial anthem had been in use for decades. After allegations about the writer of the previous provincial anthem arose, Kyunggi Province discontinued its use at all official events. 1967년대 제정된 경기대 노래는 그 노래에 참여했던 이영렬이라고 하는 분이 칠일 논란에 휩싸여 있습니다. 그래서 이제 이 시대를 새로 결인할 새로운 경기도 노래를 만들게 되었습니다. This time, the new Kyunggi Provincial Anthem will be created by residents. In a recent contest, 1,529 competing entries were received. Out of 15 semi-finalists selected by specialists, three final candidates were selected through evaluations by residents, poets, lyricists, and celebrities. 보통 이 저, 관에서 만든 노래는 군과 품으로 이렇게 딱딱한 노래들이 많은데 또 행사에 쓰이는, 행사 목적으로 쓰이는 노래들이 많은데 이번에 경기도에서 그 새로운 노래를 만들 때는, 음, 정말 그 경기도 도민들이 이 콧노래로, 콧소리로 흥얼흥얼 할수 있는, 음, 그러니까 늘 이렇게 붙이고 사는, 도민들이 몸에 붙이고 사는 그런 노래, during the 16-day evaluation process, undertaken via a provincial opinion poll website, more than 1,800 Kyunggi residents participated. Immediately after the selection of the candidate lyrics, the contest for music began on May 21st. This contest is also open to all Kyunggi residents. To participate, Submit music for one of the three final candidates via the Kyunggi Province website no later than September 28th. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.